The Buffalo Bills offense is one of the top offenses in the league. They are averaging 32.8 points per game. That's second in the league behind the Dallas Cowboys. But if there's one chink in their armor or area that they need to study this bye week, it's got to be red zone offense. According to Football Outsiders, they are currently ranked 18th overall in the red zone area, specifically 21st in passing in the red zone and 18th in rushing. Now, if you look back to 2020, they were 9th overall in the red zone, 5th in passing, and 25th in rushing. So a lot of fans are asking themselves, how can a Bills offense that was so effective in the red zone last year struggle so much this year, especially considering the fact that they're still putting up points? Today, we're going to examine that by looking at how the Bills have augmented their offense, specifically RPOs, run pass options, anticipating that they would see a lot more zone coverage after lighting up the defenses in 2020 when they went into man coverage. And we're also going to look at that from a red zone perspective and how that ties into the overall strategy of how defenses are game planning against the Bills. We are also going to examine how defenses aren't giving them those layup looks in man coverage in the red zone in that condensed area of the field like they got in 2020 and how that's affected the Bills offense in the red zone because now they're only converting 55.17% of those red zone opportunities, which is 27th in the NFL. So let's start with the run pass options strategy on the offensive side of the ball. The Bills lit up the NFL last year with their man beater receivers, guys like Diggs, Beasley, John Brown, Davis, all those guys were really, really good versus man coverage. So they anticipated this season that they would see a lot more zone, especially with how the way the playoffs ended last year, they kind of saw some of that strategy from the Colts and the Chiefs. So Dable's counter punch was run pass options, which are great versus zone coverage. So why are RPOs so good for the Bills offense and Josh Allen? Because on any given play, Josh Allen has a checklist. He has a set of options, whether it's run or pass, that will make the offense more efficient and correct more times than not. RPOs essentially make the defense wrong no matter what the play call is by Josh Allen and Brian Dable. Now the RPOs run by the Bills offense are quite complex and they're pretty diverse. So I'm going to try to run through some of them today from the perspective of the red zone. So in 2020, the Bills ran RPOs 9% of the time. So 9% of their playbook consisted of RPOs. That was ranked 12th overall and overall it was about 97 plays of their offensive output. This season though, they are running RPOs 19% of the time, which is fourth overall and breaks down to about 80 plays so far in the first six weeks. So that is quite the jump when you're looking at just the RPOs alone, not including the red zone. Now, if you whittle it down to the red zone alone, the Bills are running RPOs 24% of the time. That is nearly a quarter of the plays in the red zone. And I'm gonna show you why I love it but also at the same time, hate it. Now there are an array of RPOs run by the Bills and one of the most common ways occurs prior to the snap. A big part of the Bills offense are check with me plays. Josh Allen get two plays in the huddle, a lot of times being one being a run, one being a pass. He'll get to the line of scrimmage, look at the box numbers and decide whether he should run or pass. Whatever play will give them the advantageous matchup. And if Allen checks to a run, more times than not, the receivers are still running a route, still running their guys off as if it is a pass. And more times than not, Charting agencies like Sports Info Solutions, where I get most of my data, will chart that as an RPO. So you got to keep that in mind when we're watching this film. So what is Allen looking for when he's reading the box? He's trying to see if he has enough guys to block up what the defensive front is showing. Is it a light box or is it a stacked box? Will the offense have a hat on a hat or even a plus one, depending on the run call? Because if they do, more times than not, the Bills are going to run the ball. These lighter box looks are 100% related to how defenses are trying to slow down the Bills' weapons on the outside, trying to minimize Josh Allen, trying to minimize those big plays down the field by playing coverage over the top, by putting as many secondary defenders deep so that they cannot get those chunk plays. So defenses are inviting the run, the lesser of the two plays when it comes to impact on the field. Defenses aren't scared of the running backs, especially the further away from the goal line they are. Even though they may be outnumbered in run fits, they believe that their defensive front can win versus the Bills, or their add-on run defender will fly downhill in run support to constrict any rushing lanes before the back can break one for a touchdown. Look how the motion by Beasley pulls a guy out of the box. The Bills have a five-man box, and yet they're still not able to break a run free here. So the assumptions by the defense have worked for the most part when the Bills were aligned in their spread sets. Another option for Allen, aside from reading the box, are called free access plays. So again, it's not a true post-snap RPO. 
It's more of a hybrid concept, but one that Allen has in his pocket in most formations. Most coaches call these routes glance routes because the QB is taking a glance at his receiver, and if he has advantageous leverage, the QB has the option to simply throw it whether a run or RPO is called. The Bills took these gifts more last year, but I believe that with the added emphasis in the run game, Allen is now rolling with runs in the red zone more often. As you can see, the Bills have a light box, a two deep shell with only six guys in the box. This is inviting the run. And if Allen didn't have a free access play to Diggs with the cornerback in off coverage, I imagine he just would have handed it off. The Titans jump off sides and the free play on a free access option played out perfectly. Another variation to the Bills RPOs that Dayball has installed is reading leverage or advantageous numbers to the outside, not in the box. Is the defense giving the receiver space, leverage, or even a hat on a hat? We see this a lot, but it has mixed results in the red zone. Allen may have a light box, but he has the green light to bypass the run and give it to his receivers. Here the Bills motion Beasley and Allen notices the defender doesn't completely follow him out wide. He hangs on the fringe. So Allen throws it to Beasley with a blocker out in front and some space. The Bills love to do this when defenses show a light box and make the nickel defender the add-on run defender. The nickel can often get out leverage and the safety has to fill from depth, so there are opportunities to steal yardage. On this play, Allen believes that Sanders can hold the nickel and or safety and that the formation will give Beasley leverage to win versus reserve corner Breon Borders. Beasley works his magic after the catch, but it is called short of the goal line. This was 100% a touchdown, but the Bills rushed to the line of scrimmage and failed on the QB sneak. As I've said, these numbers or leverage reads have been a mixed bag. Here Allen believes the Bills have a 3 on 2 out wide to Diggs, but he doesn't take into account that the Steelers are playing a too high coverage with their corners squatting. The receivers are running routes, so the Bills aren't getting a hat on a hat. Maybe Allen should have handed it off, or maybe he was supposed to turn it into more of a screen so he could pick up blockers. But either way, the execution was not good. On this play, Allen looks to get it out to Beasley, but the Steelers get in the passing lane to deter the throw. Allen is forced to keep it and the play is minimized. So now let's dive into some true RPOs. Here's probably the most common outcome the average fan is used to seeing and probably the reason that a lot of people confuse RPOs with zone reads. On the first level read, Allen is generally reading the end man on the line of scrimmage. So it starts as a zone read, but the receivers are actually running routes as opposed to blocking for the read option. Allen executes the mesh with the running back while diagnosing the read man. If that defender crashes on the dive, Allen will keep it and work through his checklist. If the defender plays it soft and flat footed, Allen simply gives it to the back. Now the offense just picked up an extra blocker front side and or is a plus one altogether depending on the formation. Look at how the Washington football team aligns versus this formation. Two safeties deep, and basically a five-man box. The routes by the receivers pull defenders away from the box. The Bills leave the read man unblocked. He charges the mesh, which gave the Bills a big upper hand, and Moss is able to convert the first down. That's a decent play, right? But what it does is somewhat neuter Allen. It takes the ball out of his hands, because the defense is essentially coaxing the Bills to run it by playing soft coverage and giving them light boxes. The next step in this sort of RPO is the keep. If the read man crashes on the running back, Allen will then pull it and activate the passing portion of the concept. This isn't a red zone rep, but watch how the read man crashes, Allen pulls it, and now becomes a true weapon as a runner and as a passer. Allen waits out the edge defender and then floats it to Knox for a good gain. These plays are money. They are quite efficient in the red zone, but they aren't passes that push the ball down the field all that often. Because with the line run blocking, you can easily get called for illegal man downfield penalties. They are good plays in the short area, but the minor issue here is that it plays into the defense's hands, with them playing soft coverage and keeping everything in front of them. And the Bills don't have many yards or run after the catch type guys to split multiple defenders to reach the end zone. Where it is deadly is in the low red zone, inside the 10 yard line, because Allen becomes a triple threat. If the defense takes away the back, he can keep it, run it, or throw it. Look at this play from the Texans game. Allen keeps it, gets on the perimeter, and puts the safety Reed in conflict. Should Reed crash on Allen because he is now the force player? Or stick with Knox in coverage? He chooses Allen, and Allen tosses it out to Knox. This is modern triple option football. Against the Chiefs, Allen once again shows how he's a force on these plays in the low red zone. The defensive end crashes, but retraces pretty well. 
but the corner is in conflict. The Chiefs are in single high zone coverage, so the Bills have created a two-on-one situation. In other words, the corner is going to lose regardless of what player he chooses. McKenzie is running a diagonal route to the flats, and Sanders is running a corner route. It's a nice high-low of the corner. The corner hesitates for a quick second thanks to Allen selling a pass to McKenzie, then threads it to Sanders for the touchdown. We saw the very same play against the Titans, but Allen came off of Sanders too quickly. And I think if Allen hit Sanders on this play for a touchdown, this red zone conversation is a tad different. Another variation of the RPOs the Bills run are second level reads. Most of the time this is a hybrid play, sometimes a pre-snap box read, sometimes a post-snap read of a linebacker in the box. Here Allen is reading the linebacker. Is he fitting up versus the run or not? If he doesn't fall into his run fit, Allen will give it and the Bills will have advantageous numbers play side. But mainly, the Bills use this sort of play this year to run the ball with Josh Allen. Generally, there will be some eye candy or misdirection with Allen either throwing a swing pass out wide or running the QB draw. It's more of a pass run option, a play that the Bills have had an enormous amount of success with because they have pulled guys out of the box and gotten a hat on a hat. But this year they have struggled because defenses are keyed in and not rushing upfield, which would open lanes for Allen. Even when the offense has advantageous numbers to run this play, the defense is still able to disrupt the blocking enough to slow the play down. Allen isn't getting any more walk-in touchdowns on this play. Look at how light of a box the Bills got on this play. But watch how the football team runs a game with Young and Payne. Payne takes the C gap, Young the A gap, and this allows a linebacker to fill the B gap from the fringe of the box. They were totally keyed in from the snap. One of the few times this concept worked was when the Bills got man coverage and put Allen on the perimeter with a puller. So they got a hat on a hat because it was a QB keeper. This was one of six attempts the Bills used an RPO call on third down. Generally, they run RPOs on first and second down, what is often referred to as your base offensive plays. One of the final true post-snap RPOs run by the Bills is a third level read, where the safety is the conflict defender. The Bills are reading a safety who has a run fit responsibility. The Bills ran this a couple times against these zone heavy Titans last week. One drew a flag and the other resulted in a touchdown. The Titans show a two deep shell and a light box. The safety has a gap to fill from depth if the Bills run. So Allen executes the mesh and throws a strike to Diggs for an easy touchdown. While I love the strategy by the Bills offensive staff of increasing RPO usage against all the zone coverages that they're seeing this year, I'd like to see them scale it back just a little bit in the red zone and simply call a run or a pass. Running RPOs nearly a quarter of the time in the red zone really takes a ball out of Josh Allen's hands because the defense is gonna give you a light box. They're gonna play coverage, they're gonna play soft zone coverage and induce a run by the offense. That limits the impact that Josh Allen has on a play. He's either going to check into a run or simply throw it underneath for a short gain. You gotta make the defense account for Josh Allen and while RPOs do that from the 20 to the 20, I'd rather see the ball in Josh Allen's hands as a passer and as a runner. In 2020, the Bills passed the ball 57% of the time in the red zone. This year, they're only passing 53% of the time. And that's because the Bills are running a lot more RPOs. The defense is giving them the light box and the Bills are taking those runs, which is great, but they're just not breaking any for touchdowns. I want the ball in Josh Allen's hands. I want him dropping back the pass. I want him making plays with his arm, and if there's nothing there, then he can scramble. Those rushing lanes will open up because defenses are only rushing for, they're not blitzing. Let him have the ball in his hands. Let him be special like he is. All right, it's time to shift gears. Let's take a look at the drop back passes by the Buffalo Bills. As I said earlier in this breakdown, defenses are not playing that full court press, that man to man coverage that Josh Allen saw from time to time in 2020. No, they're all dropping out into zone coverages, including the playoffs last season. Josh Allen saw man-to-man -man coverage on 267 of his dropbacks, so right around 35% of the time. On those plays, he threw 23 touchdowns and only 4 interceptions. This season, he's only seen man coverage on 56 dropbacks, so right around 22% of his dropbacks this year, and he's only thrown 2 touchdowns and 2 interceptions. In the red zone last season, Josh Allen and the Bills offense saw man-to-man -man coverage right around 46% of his dropbacks. And in those situations, Josh racked up 15 touchdowns. Whereas this year, he's only seeing man-to-man -man coverage on 19% of his dropbacks. And in those situations, he's only thrown one touchdown. Now, there's a lot of time left in the season, but it's pretty clear that as I said earlier, 
Defenses are just dropping as many guys out into zone coverage and it's slowing down the Bills offense. And it's not an issue until they hit the red zone. But as the field shrinks and defenders don't have to cover as much ground and as those passing windows shrink in the condensed area of the field, defenses have done a really good job of slowing down Josh Allen and the Bills offense. And that falls on Brian Dable and the Bills offensive staff. They have to do a better job of scheming up zone beater concepts to get the ball into the end zone and then of course it's up to josh allen he has to pull the trigger when he has a guy running down the seam versus single high coverage he has to pull the trigger on time on schedule when he has a high low or smash concept versus two high single looks he's got to be willing to take those shots when they're there because when you're seeing as much zone coverage as they are on offense you have to be on time with the ball and you have to deliver it you have to be confident in that throw and properly place the ball on this play the football team rotates into a cover three look and Josh takes what the defense gives him by hitting Beasley on the spot concept. Good read and throw. Similar play here against the Steelers. He takes what the defense gave him. But if he wanted to, he could have had a seam shot to McKenzie for a touchdown. He just has to hold the post safety and keep the throw inside from the corner bailing to his deep third. Because that corner is ultimately responsible for both of these vertical routes. It's not an easy throw by any means. But if he recognizes the coverage sooner, he can use his eyes to manipulate defenders in order to make the seam throw on time. He even missed it on a free play. Pressure played a part on this one, but the opportunity to get rid of it was there. Against the Chiefs, the Bills dial up another all-vertical concept against a cover three rip Liz call. Allen has his eyes in the correct spot, but both Beasley and Knox are denied an easy entry into the seam which throws the rhythm of the play off, so Allen isn't able to work the seams. So he decides to give Diggs a shot. When defenses drop out into cover three calls like this, the seams are the weak spot in the coverage and the Bills have not been able to find a way to get the ball down the seam consistently. In my opinion, seam throws have always been an area that Allen needed to improve on. And I think teams are challenging him in the red zone with cover three looks. He has 11 dropbacks against cover three in the red zone this year, which is the same number of times he saw it all of last season. He only has three completions against it this year, one being a touchdown. Allen has the second most dropbacks against two high coverages with 16, only two dropbacks behind Patrick Mahomes. He has a touchdown percentage of 18.8%, which is good for 18th. His average depth of throw versus these coverages is 4.9 yards, which is ranked 17th among QBs with at least five attempts versus two high coverages. I think they've been patient and have done some things to get the ball on the perimeter and into the short area, but teams are just rallying and forcing the next down. The Bills aren't avoiding third downs like they try to do outside of the red zone. Allen has also seen pressure 38.9% of his dropbacks when facing two high coverages, which is the ninth highest percentage. But to his credit, he hasn't been sacked once. Allen is very good at executing smash concepts in the red zone. He knows how to get squatting defenders to commit to the under route by using shoulder and pump fakes so that he can sneak a pass into the back corner. And that's where defenses are funneling the ball. They are clogging the middle of the field, whether in single or two high looks, and denying any easy route to the middle. Allen and his teammates need to attack outside. They need to win more one-on-ones outside so that the second and third level defenders aren't able to defend the middle by escorting receivers to the next zone. The Bills need to create more conflict for whichever zone defender they are attacking on any given play. Teams are using the same coverage techniques the Bills play on defense. Three over two to the bottom of the screen and four over three to the top. And look at how the defenders work together. To the top, Diggs is taken away by the linebacker underneath, then passed on to the safety, and the routes outside by Beasley and Sanders have no shot. The corner passes Knox off to the safety and helps take away the running back, generally the too high route beater concept. Dable needs to scheme up better concepts to beat these coverages, to give Allen a few more layups. With all of those defenders in coverage and only four men rushing the passer, Josh Allen is able to escape the pocket and create a touchdown on his own. That's the playmaker that we need to see more of. This applies to third down as well. Teams are doing a good job of taking away Allen's primary weapons on money downs, but he has kept plays alive for the most part. Defenses have used a lot of bracket coverages against Diggs and Beasley, which has opened up some things for others, but opposing coordinators are doing whatever it takes to extend drives, to force the Bills to have to cycle through the downs, and then hope to get a stop on third down in the red zone. And it's worked. Some of those pressure stats have a lot to do with Allen holding onto the ball because defenses are spaced in the field well and plastering down in the condensed area of the field. Defenses are routinely setting a picket fence at or near the goal line and forcing Allen to throw it short or make a tough throw through a tight window 
on schedule, and Allen and the Bills have struggled to do so. Defenses are rarely giving Allen and company true one-on-one -on -one man coverage looks in the red zone. When they do, Allen is forced to make something happen with his legs or place a ridiculous throw. I truly don't think we should worry about the red zone offense quite yet, but it's clear that offensive coordinator Brian Dable needs to find a slightly new strategy in this area of the field. Reducing RPOs a smidge and putting the ball in Allen's hands is a better strategy. Don't let the defense dictate the play by showing a light box, forcing Allen to hand it off. Let him be the playmaker. That's what he is paid to do. I think he can still remain patient in the red zone, but he must pull the trigger when the opportunities arise like we see two to three times a game. Allen needs to convert those opportunities because that chance may not show up again, and before you know it, your opportunity to win the game may have passed you by.